Hey guys, out at Super Bell Ammunition's factory today. So we're in day three of the guns and grappling program with my coach and pal, Dan Hart. And I thought it'd be a great idea to not only show the students, but show you guys what they do at Super Bell and how they're continuing to reinvent and innovate in the ammunition marketplace. So why don't we head in? We're gonna to talk to Mike, the president of Super Bell. We're gonna take a look at the process of loading, kind of see what goes into making high quality ammunition share that with you. Let's go. So what do you guys do here? What is this place? Yeah, so Super Bell Ammunition, uh, we've been around for quite a while. We do a lot of ammunition for competition shooters. Mm -hmm. uh, we do a lot of self-defense ammunition. We do remanufacturing and then premium factory new. What's the difference between just the brass? So does it matter for the end user? No, is not as much. We don't do any defensive in reman. Um, the only reman we do is on our training line of ammunition. Would it matter though? Not entirely. It's purely just the brass and the process we'll show you guys that we do to the brass. We get it as close to new as possible. We have a series of checks and machinery to eliminate any damaged brass or cause issues. We're known for producing high volume on reman. Some of the top gun builders in the world use our reman ammo to build, tune, and test their guns. And we do pallets and pallets of hundreds of thousands every day just in reman. Why would they want that versus something else? Like, like what is the reason for that? More affordable training. Okay. So a lot of our client base are big into competition shooting or defensive tactics and they're trying to put volume down on range and when you get in the factory new, you're spending $30, $40 more per thousand um, and we hold our reman. Our reman is loaded on the same machinery as our factory new ammunition. So a little brass pressure vessel, you guys are still using once fired brass? Yes. So one time it got fired, stretches out a little bit and then you clean it, resize it, yep. put every e primer in it. Yep, everything size back to factory spec. We do a series of extra sizing we actually undersize um, about three thou to allow us to not have to crimp the, the bullet as much um, and prevent bullet setback it's more reliable less pressure on the brass and then we have a full pressure testing system so everything is pressure tested based on lot to make sure everything's within sammy spec whether it's reman factory new or new defensive hot loads which if i remember correctly the last time i was out here years ago when you guys got that pressure testing equipment most companies the big big ones use that but most of the little loading companies you see popped up around the country don't have it's like a six figure piece of equipment right yeah it's it's a, it's a lot to it because you have to have offsets for the brass you have to have set transducers per load um, there's a lot of data but what it tells us is the internal pressure of the cartridge and we have a pressure testing barrel and system set up for every cartridge that we load um, that way we can ensure especially on our defensive line where we're up in the plus P within SAMI pressure that we're keeping everything within SAMI that way there's no blown up guns or any issues that are happening. Being that we have that equipment, we carry it into all of our competition loads, all of our training loads, um, because we haven't, we want to use it and hold the same standard. Um, and that's really what we get everyone buying the reman for training. And then if they're shooting in nationals or worlds, maybe they'll buy new for peace of mind. But the reality is about 85% of our production currently is on the reman because you can't beat the quality with the price. And then you also make some hunting man stopping loads. Yes, yeah, so our defensive loads, um, we do everything on pistol from 380 all the way up to 44 mag. We offer an FMJ and then we offer a series of jacketed hollow points and solid copper hollow points um, that can be used for self-defense obviously and then we have quite a few people that have hunted with the 357, the 10 mil, the 44 mag solid copper and killed everything, deer, bear, and I think you, you said it. all of our guests get to take a couple free cases home. <laughs> yeah, we got some pallets we can roll out there for you guys if you grab one. <laughs> so what's cool to see here? I'm going to show you guys the whole shop. I'm going to give you a little brief uh, backstory, our mission, our goal as an American company, um, and kind of a little about that. And then I'll show you guys around so you can look at the entire process. We'll start. It's a bit loud out there. We'll start in the processing department. Um, so you can see when brass comes off of a range, we have a series of companies that we go get the brass from the law enforcement ranges and such and bring it to us. We then go from mixed brass, sort it, separate it by caliber, um, through roll sizing, through processing, back to polishing, into priming, and then from priming to loading, and then QC, um, where we separate ourselves aside from every department. Um, a lot of our staff are some of the top pro shooters in the world. Um, we hold ourselves, um, I don't want to say you have to be a GM to work here, but most of them are or close to it. And so the people that are- GM, who some of these other guys are? Yeah, Junior, uh, Wakita's close. Most of them are master class or GM shooters. The biggest stranglehold 
on the company's growth over the past couple of years as COVID hit was um, supply chain with new components. That's why we got so heavy into remand. So the company was built to manufacture new products. Um, when COVID hit and the largest brass manufacturer got bought out, they canceled all back orders and all purchase orders wouldn't allow anyone to buy. And that put us in a point where we scaled our remand, but our machinery had been purchased to manufacture all new. So we, most companies loading remand are loading on like Dillon's and Mark 7's. Which are little hobby machines. Yeah, they start in the garage and companies start there and they expand. Um, everything we'll show you today is going to be uh, Camdex loaders and Alpha loaders. We have two of our Camdexes that are nearing 150 million rounds on each of them. So they do high volume. They're meant to go for a very long time and we put everything from remand to new in it. So that's where we, we hold our standard on our, our remand is we treat the same process. And like I said, every comp, everyone out there that shoots competition, when they go to worlds or nationals, they compete with remand. All of our pro team shooters, like we've got five national titles by one of our shooter, the winningest rifle PCC shooter in the world. And he's won every single one of them on remand with every variable, but. Say his name. Max Lee Grandis. <laughs> so with that, um, those guys, they all compete. They're going to be on the range. Most likely a shooter out there is going to be using our ammo. And if there's a problem, they're going to come to them. So we hold that um, sense of pride in the product and within them to perform and make it the way we want it because it's extreme ownership is the, the goal with everything that we do here because um, you'll get called out in public <laughs> and we want to hold that, you know, that standard, whether it's just for Plinkin or a training class or could win you a national title. It's held to the same standard. Or stop a bad guy. Or stop a bad guy on the defensive stuff, anything that you do. So we just set one standard and hold it, and that's the separation of most is they think reman as this, and just like, oh, that's the training ammo. But I don't like to, with human error, I don't delineate. It's this or nothing. And you'll see, I'll show you guys our reject process of how much ammunition we reject, like hundreds of thousands of rounds that will kick aside, it goes to all my staff. So that's where all their ammo comes from. It fires fine, but it might look a little dirty. It might have a cosmetic air. It might have something that I don't want to put in the public that gets rejected. So we hold that standard um, in everything we do. So as far as loading, um, just for some numbers, because that's what most people ask on, hey, how much, how much ammunition do you manufacture? Um, so on an, any given week on the nine millimeter reman, um, daily we produce about 210 to 250,000 rounds a day just on remanufactured 9 mil. Um, 223, we can do about 60,000 rounds a day. And then when we get into new, because it's less process, we can turn the speed up a little bit more. We can get to the 250 to 280,000 uh, rounds a day in production. But the reman has to do at least 200,000 rounds a day just to keep up with our demand. Um, we're 100% we were 100% direct to consumer only. We don't do any law enforcement contracts. We don't do government contracts. We don't they export. Yeah, we don't export. We're for American, by American, uh, manufacture it here to stay with the civilians. The only dealers that we allow um, are extremely vetted. And I show up at their shops and make sure they're doing it the right way, treating the customers the way that we want to treat them. And that's the only way. It sounds backwards, say you can't sell our product, but you can fire a customer, fire a dealer. We choose who we want to work with. Same thing with instructors and sponsored shooters is they have to hold our same core values, um, which is very much based on American values. And, and that's kind of how we go about it. So we have dealers that carry our stuff, but they're very selective. And then everything is shipping out of here. And then we're, we'll do retail stores and we're working into that avenue now as well to control the consumer experience from top to bottom. All right, so I'm gonna start by showing you guys the process from start to finish. With any manufacturing process, efficiency is a big deal. Um, so I'm gonna take you guys to the back of the shop and start when the brass comes in raw. And I'll show you the whole remand process. And then when we get to the new process, I'll explain that as well. But I really wanna show each step um, on how we make as much ammunition as we do. All right, so this area is the dirty area of the shop. This is when we get raw materials in. Um, the sorting process, the polishing process, roll sizing, and then the processing equipment behind me. Um, so we're taking raw range brass, and this is just for remanufactured. It's gonna come in and be sorted based on equipment over here to be separated by caliber. It then goes through a series of roll sizing. One of our differences is how much sizing we put into our brass to get it back to spec. Uh, so everything gets roll sized, and then it goes on to the processing equipment that you see them running. Um, they will go through about 25 to 30,000 pounds a month just in nine millimeter brass uh, processing to get it prepped to be polished before it comes into the priming and, and loading equipment. 
So this are our processing department. Um, we use Camdex processors. We've modified them heavily to suit our needs. Before it goes in there, everything is roll size back to spec. If you look at our processors, what they're gonna do is they're actually gonna check for debris in the case. If there's any debris, it's gonna auto kick it. It's then gonna pressurize the case. If you had a cracked case or an oversized flash hole or an oversized primer pocket, it would auto reject it. Then it goes through a series of sizing. It's gonna deprime it, suede the primer pocket, um, and then two different sizes before it kicks it out. So it allows us to get the brass back to factory specifications before it goes to polishing and loading. So what the priming equipment is doing is it's taking the brass in a factory new primer and pressing it in the case. Um, this machine has a series of checks. Every single primer is photographed. So if you look at the track where you see the light coming down, it is taking a picture of every anvil, every wafer, and it's giving you a read on and acceptable tolerances. So if you had an upside down anvil or a missing wafer or a double anvil, the machine is gonna stop and alert the operator to clear it. That way you're not priming a dud primer. Through COVID, we saw a lot of bad components on the market. Stops like this and checks like this are allowing us to you know, provide a better product. Each one of these machines will prime up to a rate of 250 parts per minute. So we try to prime all the nine millimeter before it goes on to loading. Some of the loading equipment uh, primes as it's loading, but having these saves us a lot of time and allows us to ensure the best the best quality possible. What stuff like this cost? Uh, this one right now fully set up, 100 to 125,000 depending on conversions. Um, we'll do everything from nine, mainly nine, two, two, three, 300 blackout conversions on them. Um, each conversion you're over 10 grand. So, but it pays for itself because the loading equipment, we get about 30% more production by putting prime brass on it because we can have more speed. There's a series of checks and probes. It's checking flash hole again. It's checking for debris again. Um, it's seating the primer. It's measuring primer seat depth. It's checking to make sure there is a primer. Um, any of those faults that happen, the machine's gonna stop. The operator's gonna be alerted and come over and uh, fix it. So it allows us on remand or new to seat to a very consistent primer seating depth on typical Camdex loaders or ammo loads or Dillon's or whatever. As you're, as you're priming and you're trying to load, there's a lot going on. This style of system, its only thing is to seat primers at a very tight tolerance. So with remand, you have a variance in pocket depth. So this allows us to set the depth we want and achieve a relatively tight tolerance um, for reliable striking. All right, this is our Alpha L250 loader. Right now, he's loading uh, remanufactured 9115. What this machine does as a series of electronics and sensors and checks to ensure we have good quality. So double powder throw, it's probing the case for checks. It's got dual laser powder checks. It's got a laser overall check. It even has a case gauge built into chamber check every round before it leaves. The beauty of this machine is any fault that it has along the line, it's, gonna, it's not gonna stop the machine. It's gonna auto kick it out and keep running. So he'll load about 50 to 55,000 rounds in a 10 hour shift on this machine at very, very high quality and standards. Uh, this machine is very versatile. We'll, everything from our 100 grain on nine, all the way up to our 158 grain nine mil, remand and new it does. So the loaders behind me are actually Camdex loaders. This whole line is loading nine millimeter. Um, right now they're running 115 and 124 grain. With these loaders, they're a little bit more mechanical. They still have a series of checks for powder and such, uh, but it's a mechanical use instead of lasers like the Alpha. Um, with these machines, they'll get about 75 to 80,000 rounds in a 10 hour shift with one operator running two of them. This machine right here has about 150 million rounds on it. So these things are workhorses. They're meant to run for a very long time. After the ammunition has been loaded, it comes into our quality control department. We use ATLM machines. They're actually a packaging machine that's gonna put the ammunition into a tray. We then have custom made check blocks that match the tray. Every single round before it leaves this facility goes through a chamber check to match your gun's chamber. That's a minimum spec. So if it fails that chamber check, it does not ship and leave our facility. It doesn't matter if it's our remanufactured, our factory new, our competition, or our premium defensive line they all have to pass a minimum SAMI chamber check. It's then flipped, whether it's going into a bulk bag, a drum, or down to a 20 count box, it's packaged up and shipped out from there. So one of the big things with our company is extreme ownership. It's actually our first core value 
of the company is taking extreme ownership in every action we do and we hold every employee to that standard. If you were to look at a lot number on any of our ammunition, you're going to see, see a series of digits. Those digits tell me every person and machine that touched that brass, that bullet from start to finish. So that way, if you were to have an issue with your ammunition, I can tell you what from the entire process of manufacturing, who touched it, what machine had an error and why it got out. And that allows us to hold tight tolerances on our staff. It allows them to take ownership and hold a high standard but it allows us to fix machines if there's issues we weren't able to catch in the QC process to better provide a uh, more suitable end product for the customer. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed just taking a little peek back in the factory and seeing what you guys do here at Superville. And I appreciate Mike Absolutely. showing us during the uh, guns and grappling class, grappling and guns class, depending on how you want to say it, what, uh, what you guys do. Final words? No, thanks for coming out and bringing all the students and checking out the factory. We like to showcase, you know, what we do and how we make our products for the customer and keep everyone fed is the goal. For Americans, by American is kind of our thing, so it's what we're all about. You guys, don't be dickheads. I hope you enjoyed this tour of Supervel. That's just <laughs> like we know to cut there.